days, the two days really, or the day and a half, speak speak for themselves. The, uh, there, there are a few things which I've kind of picked up, um, and I'm just perhaps going to refer back to some some moments or quotes, particularly in the last the last hour or so, just to bring us up to date from what what we said yesterday. But something which I did pick up yesterday and I didn't mention at the end is. Um, I, I had a feeling that almost for every um, intervention, every conversation we had, we were using the term developing audiences in a, in a, in a different, subtly different way. They're all interconnected, but they, they focused on, on different things. Developing audiences for our building, developing audiences in our uh, community, developing audiences for our, our work, developing audiences globally, locally. But one of the most interesting ones which came out in, uh, in, in, in one of the presentations was the idea of developing audiences what is what we do. We develop, or, develop audiences. That's to say we take... It's what's been called in the past educating audiences or, or, or taking our audiences with us. Or, but there, there are different phrases that have been used. But... It was used specifically yesterday uh, in relation to challenging audiences, to giving them experiences that they're perhaps not used to or even necessarily comfortable with, and, and so on. So um, I suppose I can, uh, that's, to summarise all that, I can say that at the end of this thing, for me, um, I'm less clear about what developing audiences means than I was at the start. But please take that in the right sense. Yeah, I think that's a good thing. It's just interesting. Um, yeah, the, uh, the hands. I found, I, I found the hands really such a telling, um, such a telling uh, visual and um, gesture. And I, and I wrote down something which I invented myself as you were as you were showing that presentation with the hands, which was gestures of engagement. Um, we, we talk a lot about engagement, but but we don't talk so so much about the, the body as a as a symbol and as a, as a vehicle of engagement. And I thought that was one that was really interesting. Very immediate, very direct, and, and could have all sorts of uh, very um, em emotive, um, aff affective um, connections for us. Um, another one was, which, which came up earlier on, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually drawing between the two sessions today. When we talk about digital distribution, or, or whatever the term is, um, the, the, uh, the possibilities of scaling up in, in an empty life sense, um, or scaling down and, and really focusing right down on, on, on uh, something that's very personal and individual to, to, to a digital user. Um, and uh, again, I think at times, we, you know, if, if the Arts Council really is encouraging Arts, um, arts organisations in the United Kingdom to, to, to really uh, build digital thinking into their work. They're probably just following what's happening uh, uh, around the country and around Europe anyway. But it's, it's important not to jump to simplistic um, conclusions about what that means, what it means to in in build, build digital in. You know, we're, we're not, it seems to me futile to to think that you could build up a, a network of, of, of uh, you know, theatres that are separately, individually, um, creating live cinema content, for example. There, there, there are scale issues, there are issues of you know, a, a saturating market, there are, issue, issue, there are all sorts of issues connected with that. And maybe we shouldn't be trying to replicate and, and copy what we're doing, but, but actually um, finding new routes and, and the scale up, scale down thing seems to be one of those areas which are worth exploring if you understand what I mean. Now there's another one which I wrote down as digital on the edge or digital at the centre, question mark. That's to say, um, is, is uh, the, the use of digital in, in relation to our work, is it about t having conversations that move outward from, out, from, out, from the centre? Um, how we can we can talk to to, pub, to our publics to our audiences talk talk ex externally, um, and or is it about inviting in? Is, is it about bringing drawing people into it? And the, there's a there's a, a, a two way thing going on here, 
which uh, seems to be interesting to me. Um, peer to peer, down to up, which came in, in, in Eleonora's presentation, very interesting. And I particularly like the phrase, we play with their curiosity. Um, there are all sorts of plays on words in that phrase, but it's a really interesting phrase. We play with their curiosity. Maybe theatres do that as well. Uh, I, I won't go back on to this, this question of customer at the centre. Cent I think that's just come up and I've already expressed it, so I won't re return to that. It's a very interesting one. It can appear contradictory. There are certainly tensions, but there also seem to me some really creative crossovers and interest in, in playing with, that, with the, those, two, those two phrases. And I think I'm just about there. Oh, now the final one is um, immediacy. It seems as if immediacy is really the, 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 the dynamic of so much uh, today. There's, 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 by the time you've reflected on something, it's moved on to something else. And how we respond in the immediate way to, uh, and, and create uh, opportunities in, 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 to, to, to play in that immediate world, even though the things that we do may take weeks, months to bring to, to fruition. So there are just a few things that I picked up during, during the course of this morning. I, I, I hope they mean something to you. They meant something to me. And uh, it's probably my, my, my final word over these two days, except to thank, before handing over to Dan, to thank all of you um, for your participation and contributions. Of course, the speakers, and, you know, particularly, but actually to all of you. It's never easy to find a, a common space across so many backgrounds and so many interests. Uh, I found it very interesting and enriching and I, I hope you have too. So thank you very much. I'll hand over to Dan now, but uh, those who are travelling back longer distances, have a good journey. Thank you. I was going to do for thank yous, but Ivor's just done it really. So it just, I just wanted to thank Ivor actually uh, for his time and, and kind of chairing uh, the sessions. And thank you all for uh, A, the huge long journeys that you've made to get here to Sheffield today um, over the last couple of days, rather, um, but also for all the contributions. And thank you uh, for that because we've put together, I think, what's been a um, I've learnt a lot. Um, I knew what was coming, but I still have felt that I've learnt an awful lot um, about what's going on uh, kind of across Europe. So thank you all for that. We're going to sort of hand over now to some bit of practical theatron stuff. But I think Lars is just going to say a few words first, and then we're going to go straight to Benita, then back to me, and then lunch. <laughs> thank you. Uh, first of all, I really want to thank Dan for his hospitality and uh, the impressive program of the two days and for engaging so competent people behind uh, the stage, Soraya with interviews and Jackie and everybody else of the staff. And also on stage, Ivor, uh, for very smooth, competent, knowledgeable chairing of this nut that easy congregation of people. So thank you very much for that. Uh, and I think, I think it's maybe the first time that we are actually sitting on stage, us people from behind. And what a nice feeling. Um, then I should just remind you I think you know, but I should just remind you that this occasion could be both the epilogue of Theatron and the prologue of Theatron 2. We don't know right now, but we'll of course get back to you immediately when we know, especially if it's a positive answer. Otherwise, we might have to, suggest, uh, to uh, get over it. Still, it's time to, to thank all of you, all, all partners of Theatron, all present, and all the other active members of you who have participated on other occasions uh, for five years. Um, in this collective 
endeavor. It has been a true treat to be with you in all of the exciting cities around Europe. And it has been so rewarding to go that deep together in our common challenges as performing arts institutions. I'm convinced that we have been able to pass on clearer pictures of what it takes to become a theater or festival for the more diverse public of today. Uh, this is also a very good occasion to express my deepest gratitude to Benita. I know that you all know how vital she is for this project. My by far best decision was to ally uh, myself with Benita. She is so damn effective, competent, intelligent, and such a nice person, uh, simply. Uh, I would miss not working with her some more years, as I would miss all of you. After a show of Peter Pan, actually at Odense Theatre, our lead partner, directed by someone, some of the oldest one of you might uh, remember, the old English theatre anarchist Pip Simmons. You know. Good. <laughs> uh, my oldest son, uh, who uh, might have been six at that time, simply refused to leave the theater after the applause. They should replay it uh, as on his video at home. Uh, let's hope for a replay with extensions uh, with uh, Theatre on Two. Thank you very much. Luckily, I was filming that so I couldn't get too emotional, but thank you very much. Um, yeah, so um, two wonderful days of inspiration. Now, I have the wonderful task to bore you uh, with some last project to do, uh, which also shows, we're, you know, it's not over yet. Uh, there's, there's a few more things to do, and also to show you what, what our vision is that Lars just mentioned. Uh, so there are a few final things that we have to do and that you have to be aware of because we have a few weeks left, and then we have about a month to get all the reporting done, and I know that a month is not our usual timeline in which we get that done, so we all have to be very, very good this time. Um, so there's three big things that I would like you to consider doing in the next six weeks. One is uh, we sent several times a little, little questionnaire that we called Theatron Resume to say, what did you get out of Theatron? And for me, and I think for Lars as well, it was lovely reading these because uh, most of the time what we hear is like, it's so complicated, we hate the reporting. So to hear that a lot of you actually get something nice out of it apart from being stressed about all the terrible bureaucracy that we impose on you is, is very nice. And it'll be very important for our reporting to hear what did your house get out of that. The second thing is that uh, we need your help to share the insights of Theatron. Uh, we're currently producing this huge package of material that I'll talk about uh, in a second. And uh, I think it's really impressive what we achieved over the last uh, five years, but we need all of you to help us to disseminate that because between us we have an amazing reach and we need to make use of that. Uh, and the last thing is of course the reporting. It's gonna happen over the next six weeks. And uh, a big incentive for the reporting is that uh, once we have that we will distribute the money. And uh, we had very good news from Brussels, so uh, the houses that have overspent will get more money, the houses that have underspent will not be penalized in any way, apart from 
getting less money. So we're very flexible about it, but we need the reporting to be done 100% before we can release the final funds. Are there any questions about that? Wonderful, okay, then I will tell you a little bit about uh, the, the next steps or what's still, what's still up for the next few weeks. So I think um, it was really exciting to hear about these, these two days. And we asked these questions about how do we get uh, new audiences in the theater? And I think one of the answers that I heard from the first day was that we can't just sell tickets. We really have to listen and understand, and then we have to share our vision. And on, on today, we asked a bit like, how do we get theater out there to new audiences? And I think the answer was that we, we can't just uh, go out there and sell tickets. We really have to reinvent and reimagine what we do for the particular channels that we're trying to use. And of course, this is really the vision of, uh, of Theatron over the last years. That's what we've been discussing for five years. And just to remind you where we started off, uh, our first objective, according to our proposal, was we have to do artistic co-productions because that's what Europe wants. And I think what we found out or what we did is much more than co-productions. We created inspirations, we stole ideas from each other, we reinvented ideas, we uh, invented this format of adaptations. Everyone in Europe's doing Bürgerbühne now. Um, and I think that's very nice how we filled this idea of co-production with a much more creative and innovative work. The second thing that we said we would do is uh, audience engagement. We would change the mindsets of our audiences so that they would come to our theatres. And again, I think what, what happened is that uh, we are changing the mindsets of our theatres rather than of our audiences. And hopefully, uh, you know, now that our minds are stretched and we become more audience-centric, that's something that, that can't be taken away from the theatres that have been part of this network. And finally, we talked about let's exchange best practices, whatever that is. And I think the beautiful thing is that like, we've all now, and I'm going to tear up, <laughs> we've all got really nice new colleagues all over Europe. So much more than just an exchange of best practice, I think we've all have new friends and new colleagues. So what's happening now? Lars said it, on the one hand, we have submitted a new proposal where we're building on the ideas of Theatron One, and we're saying we're trying to really make theater re-emerge re as a key voice of Europe, in the European public sphere. So I think we're trying to make uh, Theatron grow up. We've talked wonderfully about audiences, and I think now we're gonna have to talk how we can become a part of our community and a real part of, 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 of the strange times that we're living in. And we have high hopes. We've had some nice uh, little uh, voices from Brussels, but of course there's a huge competition and uh, we just don't know. Um, on the other hand, there's the legacy. There's all the things that we, we wanna leave behind and uh, that we're still working on. And uh, I think on the one hand, that means uh, things that we need to share about the project. It's about inspiring people with the work that we've done. And finally, it's about um, connecting people and also keeping connected. Uh, and we said, what's a good word for that? And a lot of you helped us to have a look how we could call that. And we said, yes, this is about engaging stages. It's about stages that engage with their people, with their audiences. And all of us should be proud to call ourselves engaging stages and really have that as a brand for the type of work that we're trying to do. And under that title, the insights that we're releasing over the next uh, three, four weeks is uh, two books. Uh, culture Shift and the book from Berlin on audience research. We're doing portraits on all the partners that um, all of you have been contributing today with the video interviews. Uh, we're doing a resume of the, of the entire network, which is why we need you to fill out the questionnaire. And we'll make a lot of the research data and studies available as well um, in more detail than what's in the book at the moment. We are publishing fact sheets of, on our key discussions that we've had um, on things like young people in theater, um, on uh, how, to, how to work uh, creatively together on uh, social media. 
Um, so we're trying to really focus on a few key topics that we've discussed. We hope that the profiles that we're creating in the interview will inspire other people to do similar work. Um, so will hopefully our YouTube channel and uh, a workshop in Brussels where we're going to talk to policymakers about uh, how important it is to understand what audience engagement is um, and to give more money for that as well. Uh, we said from the beginning we would launch 2E curricula so people can go online and learn about that work that we're doing and we've got the technology together and we're going to mix all these amazing things up together to uh, program that so people can just log in and learn about doing that in their own time. And finally, we hope that we can continue this connection through this idea of the Engaging Stages Network. Lars has written an amazing, I think manifesto is the wrong word, but uh, vision <coughs> on, on what that has to be. Um, we'll continue a newsletter, and I think it would be nice to say, okay, auf Wiedersehen rather than goodbye, and Roma Europa has uh, kindly invited us to join them again in November in Rome and, you know, fantastic program in Rome in November, I think that's a very good motivation to continue this discussion, even if there isn't a Theatron too. So I hope you'll all be an engaging stage and remind, uh, remain an engaging stage this year and we can continue this discussion and you'll help us to now get the last few things out there and really get the impact of these amazing five years together. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Benita, for that. And uh, Benita just created that presentation. I don't know when you did it, but thank you very much uh, for that. It's kind of very, very clear. As you, as you know, um, from the kind of the quantity of work, there's still quite a lot to be done, uh, really. And I kind of thank you in advance for your time and your contributions and your corrections and looking at proofs things really really quickly uh, so that we can meet our kind of deadlines with that so thank you very much um, you know we don't want to get over emotional about this because uh, you know but it has been a long five years and I think as Benita and Lars said we've made some kind of great friends and some great kind of connections kind of across Europe and it's been a pretty amazing and life changing experience I think for me as someone who runs um, you know, a small place, biggish place in, in, uh, in Sheffield, but it's, it's absolutely uh, fantastic. And I think we've done a lot of thank yous, really, but I don't think we have really expressed enough thank yous uh, to two particular people. Um, they thanked each other, but actually I think on behalf of everyone here at Theatron, really, if, if Lars, if you hadn't had this idea, um, I think the world would be a pretty poorer place. So thank you very much for that. And I, I was very, I was really sad yesterday, actually. We were walking back or to the hotel and I was just thinking of all the meetings I've had with Lars um, over the years that always involve food, mostly fish and chips. Uh, um, and I was kind of thinking, I don't know when I will next have fish and chips with Lars. And I was a bit sad about that actually, to be fair, because um, we've got to make that absolutely kind of happen. And I don't think everyone realises, over the last few weeks I've been working very closely with Lars and with Benita and we had, went to Brussels and, uh, and I don't... I don't think I ever appreciated um, how much work that Benita and Lars actually do for Theatron. I know everyone else contributes a lot, I don't get me wrong, but the kind of the level of detail and the contributions that they make and the, the absolute kind of policy stuff and we, I have been protected from EU commissioning stuff and um, thank you very much for that and I never want to get involved too much with that. Maybe we won't be able to, um, but um, I just think, you know, the, the work that they do is, I think they are the unsung heroes of Theatron, really, and on behalf of all the members of Theatron and those who aren't here as well, just have a little gift for um, Lars and for uh, Benita as well as a little, it's a bit of Sheffield, I'm afraid, but you are in Sheffield, so um, thank you on behalf of everyone here. So we have finished, but let's just do a little photo, please, Benita and Lars.